Okay, welcome back to part five. We're going to go ahead and wrap up this isometric. And as I mentioned before, the next part we're going to make is this box over here, which is a 40 by 28, and it is 16 units in. So let's go ahead and draw that. First thing first, I'm going to activate my line tool. I'm going to click here. I'm going to move down 16 units. 16, enter. I'm going to go up 28 units, enter. I'm going to go over here 40 units. I'm just going to type that in even though I can snap to it. I'm going to go downward 28 units. And I'm going to go back over here 40 units. So if you did that correctly, you should have the individual parts of your box. Now let's join that. So I'm going to use the join command. And I'm going to click, or right, hit enter. I'm going to click on these four sides. Enter. And now they have been joined. And then I'm going to use the press pull tool. Press, enter, click over here. And I'm going to drag this out so that it is 22 minus 64, 42 units. So 42 units, enter. 42 units across, just like that. Now we need to put that circle into place. And that is a 24 unit diameter circle. So radius of 12. And if it was going into this shape, it would be 16, so it would be 8 units before the circle started, or roughly, you know, 20 units in. So let's go ahead and draw that. First thing first, I need to see how my plane is. And right now, I'm not drawing in that plane. So if I try to draw a circle, and I clicked on the center here, as you'll see, it's not going in the way I want it to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my my XYZ axes over here and I'm going to rearrange it so that it looks like this. So now my Y and my X are in the direction that I want to draw in. So I'm going to use my circle tool now, enter. I'm going to click at the center of this circle and it looks like it's somehow defaulted back so let me just go ahead and modify this a little. Okay, let's go ahead and try that. Circle, enter. There we go. My XYZ is now in place. I'm going to set this to 12 units. Except, yeah, I believe we're working in radius, so let's hit enter. That looks fine. And now we are going to trim out this middle part. So trim, enter. I'm going to click on this as well as this. Enter. And it doesn't want me to delete that. So we're just going to go ahead and use the press pull tool. I'm going to click on this circle over here and I'm going to pull it through the shape, like so. Hit enter, and if I check my shaded mode, you'll notice that it has extruded. Not quite what I wanted, but that's fine. I'll just use the subtract command, enter, and I'm going to select what I want to keep, enter, and then I'm going to select what I want to remove, enter. And if you did that successfully, you're going to notice that your shape has now been cut out. So that's looking pretty nice so far. Let's go ahead and add the final features. The last thing we have to add is this unique looking arc over here. And we have some information about it. That pretty much it has a radius of 32 for this arc. So I've never done this before, but let's go ahead and give it a try. We're going to try to recreate that. I'm going to go back to 2D wireframe mode. 
and let's go ahead and draw in a box over there. So I'm going to activate my line tool, enter, and I'm going to click over here and I'm going to drag this up roughly 48 units. And I'm going to go across 64 units, enter, and then I'm going to go back down the appropriate 48 units. And I'm also going to go over here back to this point, and that was 64 units, and I apologize for double checking over and over again. I just want to make sure I get this the first time. So we have our box. Let's go ahead and join it together with the join tool. Click on the four edges. Press enter. And then let's use the press pull tool to drag this out 16 units like so. Let's go ahead and use the fillet tool to wrap this up. To use the fillet tool I'm going to type in fill, so F-I-L for fillet, enter. Then what we're going to want to do is specify the radius, so I'm going to type in R, enter. I'm going to type in 32, which was our radius of our fillet, enter. And then first we have to select the object, so I'm going to select this shape over here. And then what we have to do is select the midpoint. So since I want this edge to bend, I'm going to click on the line and I'm going to drag in an axis of sorts. And I'm going to click once, enter. And if you did that correctly, you should have a fillet of 32 radius 32 like so. And if I hit escape a few times and hop into my shaded mode, you're going to notice that we have the completed shape. Okay, let's go ahead and add a little bit of cleanup to this. So I'm just going to press escape a few times and then I'm going to select the lines that are kind of just still there. And I'm going to use the delete key on my keyboard to delete them. So, there you have it, the completed isometric from this image. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how isometrics work. And if you have any questions or feedback, please leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you for part six.